is Hollywood is set to uncancel Kevin Spacey because it looks like he is going to be portraying Frank Sinatra in an upcoming biopic. Yeah. This is very different from doing movies that are happening overseas or small independent films. Yeah, he's not wallowing in micro-budget indie films anymore. He's back, baby. Uh, so Paul Schrader <laughs> just did an interview with Variety where he had to answer for his decision to cast Kevin Spacey in this Frank Sinatra movie. Uh, he said that he had just been uh, talking to Kevin Spacey for the first time in years. Um, and last July, he was cleared of sexual assault allegations from four different men. Um, but he, he is technically found not guilty for those crimes. Yes. Um, Schrader thought it was time to bring him in from the cold. Quote, cancel culture won't let him go. He's reading a book about how Charlie Chaplin was canceled. And I was like, wait, Charlie Chaplin was canceled? Um, yeah. what, 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 what were his crimes? So I just looked it up and it says, marriages to teenage girls, accusations of pedophilia. And there's a whole laundry list of other things. And he apparently met his second wife when she was 12 and married her uh four years after that mm -hmm. so that's kind of why weird. that's why I'm cancel a, culture guys that's cancel why, culture that's why i'm a buster keaton maximalist <laughs> <laughs> cancel culture was alive and well in the 1920s guys it actually it actually was there was a, there was a guy who got accused of uh the r thing i don't know if you're allowed the r, the r thing the r you thing. are allowed to say it yes. yeah okay yeah youtube you know, relaxed the rules on that doesn't end doesn't end with the r do you know it ends with the ape but uh, -huh. uh he got accused of it and it ended up uh he ended up not doing it. his name was like uh fatty something or whatever like I, I i forget what his name is but he was like known as being like this big fat guy that would be in films and he was in a bunch of movies and the studios ended up burning almost all the prints of the films that he had been in there's only like one film of his that still exists uh to this day they they try to wipe him from like Oh, it, Fatty Arbuckle. Fatty Arbuckle. Yep. Thank they, you, they, chat. They, yep. tri they tried to that. essentially just like memory hole his entire yep. existence. Yeah. I forgot about that. And he ended up hmm. getting found. I, I believe he got f found not guilty as well. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I wouldn't say that constitutes uh, what Me Too was or what cancel culture was or is no, I mean, today. It, it, it was, yeah. It, but obviously, there's, there's, you know similarities but yeah. it, culturally it was a very different time as well do you think that this is the time where look we talk a lot about how the average person doesn't follow the ins and outs of hollywood and doesn't follow what's going on in their personal lives they know harvey weinstein they've I've, maybe heard of harvey weinstein no, no, <laughs> Honestly, I, that, no I, know. I think they've i think that that story went so viral i think that that name is synonymous now but they uh, still don't I, even know what he was accused of really i think that did you listen to the harvey weinstein audio tapes Mm -mm. I, I do think that Kevin Spacey's story was also quite big, but I also think that a lot of people will just be like, you only have room in your brain for so much attention. And what they'll say is if a Kevin Spacey movie is coming out, it's like, oh, he must have. He must have not done it. Right. Why, why would they Why would they? Well, be that's what Paul movie? Schrader is that's, saying. They yeah. said, um, Paul Schrader collects politically incorrect opinions like an eight-year-old acquires Pokemon cards. So much so that he's been that asked by production so companies to stop posting on Facebook in the weeks leading up to his film releases. Now, that is smart uh, marketing. His, his Facebook posts are funny, though. They need to tell these celebrities to, to like, not use Twitter and not use Instagram for... All, like posting about Palestine, posting about all of their political opinions before their movies come out. I firmly believe that. Yeah. Well, you know, I stop with say, the Twitter fingers. I, I would say that I'd be more excited for Paul Schrader's new movie if Master Gardener was like any better. I thought it was like all right. Card Counter was pretty good. I mean, like I've seen a lot of Paul Schrader's movies. Obviously, he wrote for Martin Scorsese and he wrote Taxi Driver and Raging Bull. He wrote uh, the Yakuza. Um, uh, the Sidney Pollock film uh, back in like uh, 1972 or something. And uh, so, you know, I've been, I, I've watched Paul Schrader movies all my life. And, uh, you know, about the Kevin Spacey thing as well, it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, so many other like actors and producers and stuff are, are doing this that, you know, you don't know about. Like, yeah. are, yeah. are you going to suddenly moralize? Because now you kind of know that this guy might be a weirdo creep when it's like, and so many people already have the assumption that a lot of people in Hollywood are weirdo creeps. We that, just don't know the details. And that's the thing. Like when, when people talk about not seeing certain movies because an actor is in it, I'm like, 
If you've seen the list, that list of people working on that film, there's likely somebody doing something very degenerate in that cast oh, right now. I've heard, I've, I've heard a lot of stories that just, you know, never, never made it to the press or anything, but some stories that I heard from some of my friends in Hollywood, which I was like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Yeah. But, you know, it never makes it to the press. It all gets kind of covered up or nobody talks about it. And, and I'm one of those people. Look, look, I don't stop watching movies or enjoying art because a person is, especially in this day and age, when the the standard bearer for, like, what is considered offensive is so low anyways. Yeah. That, like, I'm, I'm not going to stop watching The Usual Suspects. I'm not going to not – I'm not going to stop watching House of Cards or anything else that I've liked that Kevin Spacey has done just because I think he's a scumbag. That's just well, me personally. I, I would be a hypocrite. I, I would be a complete hypocrite if I refused to watch a Kevin Spacey on moral grounds considering that I love movies with Klaus Kinski in them. And I think by most accounts, Klaus Kinski was much worse than Kevin Spacey as a man. Well, what? some of these people like Kevin Spacey or Harvey Weinstein were just chosen as sacrificial lambs for me too i'm oh. not saying that because they're innocent i'm saying that they were just it's, scapegoated it's, it, yeah, it's to like hide other the, people they're it's like they're the bad guys don't look at what everybody don't else is doing here. don't look over here we got rid of it meanwhile yeah. it's like a lot of this like a lot of this stuff a lot of the sexual harassment a lot you know a lot of this stuff is still going on but they can you know, they're biding themselves time. And I, I mean, I wish that like these very degenerate people weren't in Hollywood, but it Hollywood tends to attract these kinds of people. Uh, it's like uh, Harvey Weinstein did the like he produced so many movies that you've likely seen and loved that. Oh, yeah. Like I have am I produced a lot not, of really good films. And am actually, I not going to like sc the Scream franchise anymore yeah. because Harvey Weinstein is a piece of shit? Like, no. I'm still yeah. going to love those movies. And, and, you know, and he was doing more than a lot of studios now because he was actively finding like younger directors and bringing up new talent, especially in the 90s, which uh, and actually having them make their own original films Whereas studios. Now, if you if you make an, you know, like a low budget movie, they just want to put you onto a Marvel film or something. You know, they, yeah. they want to just make you a company man. Well, that, I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like, I, I remember getting into this with people where I talked about how like Marvel likes to control their directors and they point out like the there's like there's directors there that are big name directors, but for the most part, a lot of those films are made by people you've never heard of because it's really just Kevin Feige making the movie anyways. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter, but I, it's not going to stop me from watching these movies. Now, do I care about a Frank Sinatra biopic? Hell no. No, no what's funny is this is going to come out very close to Martin Scorsese's Frank Sinatra biopic. And I understand that they're covering different periods of his life, but they did the same thing with the, the Elvis one the oh, the yeah. elvis priscilla. elvis and priscilla but also um uh, what was the other one so there's the baz lerman one yeah there's yeah but there's a sofia coppola one yeah yes but um there was there was another example was it escapes me right now yeah. but yeah it just is going to confuse audiences and this is going to be, I think this will be kind of a test to see like if this movie does now again, coming back in a biopic is not even really going to be, it's kind of like how um, Will Smith is making bad boys Four right now, which should have been his first movie back after everything that happened with Chris Rock in the, in the slap. Oh, okay. You don't so need, awesome. you don't need so a awesome. comeback from Slapgate. No, I think that right? Chris Rock needed to come back after he said yeah. he needed to go to therapy after yeah. that. I'm but like, dude, the point that is, was is like, hilarious. If Kevin, yeah. Spacey, <laughs> if Kevin Spacey was to come back in a, in a big budget movie, that would be more of a test of whether people are willing to go see him or not because I don't think biopics make enough at the box office to really gauge what those numbers well, would be. Well, I, 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 no, because I think that, well, I think studios are interpreting the success of Oppenheimer wrong. I think that they're interpreting as, oh, bi like everyone wants to just, wants to see a biopic and not as everybody wants to see the new Christopher Nolan movie. Yes. Oh, and yeah. so I think that they're like, oh, biopics, you know, made a billion dollars. They always learn the wrong lessons. Yeah. I mean, and it's not, I mean, it's kind of a biopic, but it's still for the most part, it's not a dramatization, but it's so in depth and it's like three hours, like no other directors getting away with a three hour cut of a theater biopic. Yeah, and doing it on an IMAX, making a whole like spectacle show, like showing it on seventy millimeter IMAX, you know, and all you know, and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I drove to San Antonio to watch it on seventy millimeter IMAX. It was awesome. Mm -hmm.
Uh, I'm just, I'm not interested in this film, but I am interested to see what the public response is to Spacey. And also, you'll have to pay attention, for instance, to how the movie is marketed. Will his name be heavy in the marketing for something like this? If you remember when we were just talking about... I don't know how it couldn't be. Yeah, like when we were talking about the um, the Kenneth Branagh um, yeah. Perot movies earlier, when they made Death on the Nile... Uh, it was right around the time that uh, Army Hammer's uh, allegations Hannibal were coming Tets. out. And so who was originally in the first trailer supposed to be this big name because Army Hammer was a big name at that time. When the next trailer came out, his name is pushed to like fourth page credits and he's barely in the trailer. Yeah, it was Gal Gadot who was... Uh, the selling point. Yeah, the selling point. For yeah. that. So it'll be interesting to see if they... Uh, how Why even bother bringing him about this long after all that if you're not going to make his marketing a huge part of the film. But that'll take a, a brazen first step and then they'll be able to judge based on that first trailer whether people are, you know, amenable to seeing him in films again. It'll be interesting to see. But I but I also want to like just point out that Paul Schrader doesn't exactly get like huge budgets. You know, his mm -hmm. last his last three films have not had like incredibly high budgets at all. So my guess is that this isn't going to be some big movie. It'll probably be a like probably a 20 to 30 million dollar film. You know, on the lower mm -hmm. end of like a mid-budget movie. Uh, so he says Army Hammer was a big name. He was a growing name. At that time, there was a lot of buzz about him po potentially playing Batman. Like he was, he, he he was becoming more popular. Been, he shouldn't have been, he shouldn't have been canceled. Like that was one of the stupidest uh, Me Too's. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people just focused on the text messages and not on the actual allegations, yeah. which is why it was discredited. I'm not saying I believe the allegations, but it kind of got lost in the... It got lost in translation because everyone was just looking at these screenshots of him saying that he wants to barbecue your ribs. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.